Good morning, uh, Wilson. Thank you for joining us. Well, uh, huge allegations against the EFCC. Can you controvert this? No, I, I have a little difficulty in hearing you because I'm not by the television, so I don't, I've not been keeping track of uh, the discussion. We'd just like to get a response. You heard he, he was at the Senate committee yesterday. You heard many of what he said. What's the response of the commission against these allegations of graft? What is the job? But I had followed the discussion from the beginning, but as it is, I, it's difficult left, but I will make uh, an effort. What happened yesterday with me was uh, a distraction as far as I'm concerned because um, the Senate Committee on Ethics actually sent an invitation to the EOCC to be present uh, yesterday and we sent a letter to them that we will not be able to make it uh, yesterday and uh, offering to be present at a later date. Um, surprisingly to us, is part of the fact that we sent a letter and they went ahead with the proceedings. A uh, fair hearing would have uh, dictated that if a party to a case is not uh, valuable, then you should uh, hold your peace and wait for both parties to be present. So if you say you are looking into a matter and you've added two parties and one is not present and you go ahead to here, yeah, I don't think that is, provides a fair benchmark for... Well, the, the thing about that, Wilson, is that, that I mean... Yeah, can can you hear me, Wilson? There, I need to be sure. The issue the gentleman has raised is one that um, Nigerians with conscience have to take a critical look at. What is at issue here is not uh, a probe of Lamode per se, but an attempt to derail the anti corruption fight of, of the new administration. Um, when when, when the, the suspect that is under uh, trial by a law enforcement agency takes a matter to a national, supposedly national assembly, it amounts to us as to the distraction because. The gentleman that is making the allegation has no reputation whatsoever. This is somebody that was convicted for uh, white uh, credit card Mr. fraud Mr. in Mr. the U.S. and Mr. Can, I, also him can we for, come in here? Uh, converting police equipment fund. Mr. Wujare, he's, he's still innocent. So he's still, Mr. Wujare, you... Making bogus allegations. Well, it really doesn't matter, Mr. Wujare, if you can let us come in that. now. If you even compare all the funds that you have to If you can, you can go years. on and on but without responding to questions. Mr. Wojare, can you hear us? Yes. They can, it cannot okay. be okay. We'll have to let... Uh, 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 sure it's like it's really something. Sure yeah. <laughs> Mr. Wojare, can you hear us? Anybody that is out there. Okay. The, the, the yeah. of the he can't hear us. Right. We'll have to correct that to we'll let our producers just uh, ensure that he can hear us so we can get the questions back and forth. So, uh, uh, in the meantime, we'll have to just hold on a bit so we'll correct that. So, uh, Mr. Wujara, are, yeah. are, are you there? So, we need to get him back so he can hear and then we'll put those questions. But was, uh, George is still there. George, uh, may, there may are questions that, that have been raised now about... Uh, you, in terms of your integrity, they're saying that, look, you may be coming up with those petitions, but uh, if they question your integrity, they, uh, by extension, to some extent, yes. are impugning the allegations that you're bringing forward. Listen, uh, let, me, let me respond to that, please. Go ahead. And can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Listen, in criminal law, Prosecutors go into the prison. Is somebody serving time in prison? They'll bring that person to testify. All you look at is the veracity of the testimony. EFCC even does it in a conspiracy case, maybe involving 20 people. You can have one, two, three, or four people roll over, admit they are wrong, and you use their testimony. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So what Nigerians, the whole world should look into is the authenticity, the veracity of what I'm adducing. Now, just a moment, um, now, Mr. Obo, um, you, it would seem that you've answered the question to an extent, but then uh, it would seem that you're also quite specific in terms of you know, the periods within which you want us to look at the EFCC. You're looking at specific cases and you're looking at specific monies uh, tr diverted or transferred or misappropriated according to you uh, under the tenorship of Mr. Ibrahim Lamrodi, 
Do yeah, you uh, have a, you're not looking at the tenor of other EFCC chairmen, even I, though right now you have generalized and said the EFCC. Do you have a bone to pick with the current chairman of the EFCC? Yes, I, I, you are not giving me opportunity to really By talk means, go, go ahead and tell I us. I mean, come on. My submission yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, you know, after submitting the letter 2011, I submitted the one 2013, and I stated that these letters were submitted under the leadership of Lamode. Yes. I am the CEO of PASS. If anything is done at PASS under my leadership, I bear the brunt. Now, I submitted a letter Farida Waziri wrote to President Jonathan in the same 2011, uh, June 24, 20, 2011, in which she stated that in three years of her stewardship, 985 billion naira was recovered. So I added that added what was recovered before her tenure, added what, what was recovered after her tenure, and I came up with 1.995 trillion. Now I added all the foreign currency recoveries, and I came up with over 2 trillion. Then just, I came just, just, uh, just allow me allow me comment very quickly here. A, a moment, we'll yeah. come back to you because uh, we have uh, Mr. Ujara back online. Mr. Ujara, the issue here that uh, we would love you to address is uh, uh, the you know, veracity of his claims. How well can you tell us about the loot recovered from the former governor of Bielsa State? Uh, whether Mr. Ubo was an ex-convict or not is immaterial at this moment. Nigerians, when we talk about fight against corruption, is uh, to also look at the watchdog, the EFCC. Where is the money take gotten from the former governor of Bielsa State? That's the big question now. That, that uh, question is not a matter of controversy. Anybody who has been in this country should be aware that on the 8th of July 2009, the EFCC returned the asset that was recovered from former governor of Bielsa uh, State, DSP Alameda, back to Bielsa State government. And the former governor, TV receiver, was on hand to receive those assets from the former chairman of the FCC, Mrs. Farida Waziri. On that occasion, more than 3.2 billion naira worth of assets was returned back to the Bayasa State government. And as we speak, I'm not aware of any moment, any time, any occasion that the government came up and said, okay, what you EFC has returned back to us, is not exactly what was taken from DSP Alameda. So anybody is, is this, who is is this a case? Uh, uh, a moment, please. Is this a case of miscalculation? Because uh, he's also, Mr. Obo is also alleging that there is a shortfall of uh, over uh, one billion that's not uh, uh, recorded from when the money was moved from the former Spring Bank to what we do have uh, with the Bayelsa State Government. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm explaining to you that whatever was recovered by the EFCC from Alamisia has been returned back to the Bayesian government. If anybody has any reason to complain that anything has not been returned in the Bayesian state government, I'm not aware that Ubo who is there is from Bayesian state, he's from the cast out in Delta state. I wonder what is his interest in the loot it doesn't, that was it doesn't, recovered it, from Alamisia. That, that's my point. It doesn't matter. You, you, are, you are with the EFCC. We cannot say the EFCC chairman only fights corruption from his own native state. This is Nigeria. So irrespective of where the petitioner is coming from, they say it's immaterial. Let's go back to the, you know, bags of evidence he said he has, and he's brought that before the Senate committee. Uh, why wasn't the EFCC chairman present to at least debunk some of these allegations uh, uh, making the rounds? What what evidence are we talking about? What evidence are we talking about? You look at, at the of the, song, of the person that is supposedly bringing the evidence. Anybody can come and If, you, you, if you don't come to the... If you, it it doesn't really matter because he... And any Tom, Dick and Harry can come up with documents and say, I have documents. Have you subjected that document to forensic test? Are you sure that is did, a did the EFCC the, the EFCC chairman come before the committee yesterday for them to go through the documents? I have just told you, I have just told you in passing that we wrote to that committee to say we would be present yesterday, and we sent an observation team there, 
and they walk them out. If you want to have a fair hearing and you are conducting a public hearing, you don't walk out anybody from that hearing. You allow them to listen to the procedure. If you have nothing to hide, there's no reason for you to walk out any delegation from that, that hearing. We why wasn't the chairman there? Mr. Wujare, why wasn't the EFCC chairman present yesterday? That is what I'm explaining to you, that he wrote a letter to them that he will not be present yesterday, that he will come at a later date. When, when, when is the later date, please? When is the later date? Mr. Wujare, Nigerians would love to know the later date uh, he's uh, to appear. So the, 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 fact, the point I'm trying to make to you is that this is a distraction and the media is being sucked into it. It's a plot to delay the anti-corruption program on this administration. Are you what saying, you just a moment, Mr. Ujarin, are you, are, you are you saying, are you saying that all of... The better for this nation. Mr. Wujarin, are you saying that people shouldn't ask questions of the EFCC? Because I, I, you will sound like you're sounding a little irritated. Is it okay for the EFCC to ask people questions and not be able to take any questions by itself? I didn't get to tell you. Okay. Are you saying that the EFCC is not accountable? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely not. We are, we are an agency that is founded on transparency. We because quite a number of people say that this particular issue borders on the uh, transparency of the loot that EFCC recovers. Do you have a process, you know, through which you can transparently say that this is the process through which we transfer back that whatever it is that we recover to either the federal or the state governments? I, I think we need to even educate the media in terms of how we manage assets. When, when you recover assets, you don't share it. There are procedures. If what I recover is from an individual, if you are a victim of scam, whatever we recover is returned back to that, the victim of that, 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 uh, that, that, that crime. But if the source of that proceed is from the, the common wealth, is from the federation account, or is from the state, state treasury, we return it back to the consolidated revenue fund. That is what the provision of the EFCC Act says. And that is what we have done in, in, in the aspect of the Alaric case. All right. So for some we'll reason, come and uh, documents and people are thinking that this is a legitimate document. I think we shouldn't be giving a uh, uh, platform for such actors to. To well, uh, uh, well sir, your, duty, your responsibility is to respond to what it is. The media can focus on anything they want, and that's their job. They are watchdog. It's up to them to focus. Is it true or not? That's why we invited you to speak on it in the first instance. Could you tell us then, when will the chairman appear before the Senate committee? When did he appear before them? When will he appear before the Senate committee? What date is he seeking to appear? He wrote, he wrote a letter to the Senate committee that the commission commissioned an audit firm, KPN. No, no, the, the question is when will he prefer to appear? And that audit firm has submitted the report is under review. And he wanted the process to be concluded and to be. Mr. Wilson, can, can you hear me? I'm not sure he can hear me, but uh, Wilson, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Wilson? I'm not sure he. Wilson, are you still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. We just want to know when will the chairman prefer to appear before the Senate committee? I didn't get you credit. What day will the, Seb, will the EFCC chairman prefer to appear before the Senate committee? It is, it is it within the right of the committee to, to state a date that they will have it. But he has said that he will not be there yesterday. And so it is for them to give us the new date. All right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Wilson. Wojara, the spokesperson of the EFCC. And uh, George, we're well, completely out of time on this one. You say you've got bags of evidence. Are you going back to that Senate committee? And if, if, let me say something finally. Uh, uh, briefly, George, we're out of time, uh, briefly. Okay, I can meet Wilson anywhere with the evidence, and you can come there to cover it. We can go to EFCC now, right, and George. I will confront them with the evidence. We can go tomorrow, any day, and I want the reporters to be there. I will, I will bring the, the bags of evidence I have. 
All right. Thank you very much indeed, uh, George Ubo, uh, petitioner against the EFCC. Thank you for talking to us today.